and welcome to the Mindful Making video podcast. This is episode number 28 and this video podcast is mostly about knitting and with the aim of sharing the joy of making and the process of working with yarn and needles. Um, so I am Jane and uh, I am Danish, living in Australia. You have landed here in my little corner of the internet. You have landed here on the pool deck at my house in Hornsby Heights, which is a, a um, suburb north of Sydney in Australia. Welcome to you all and welcome to a lot of new subscribers who tuned in on the last episode. We are watching from around the globe and creating that community around the world is just amazing. So welcome to you if you're watching from the States, from Canada, from Scotland, from the UK, from Norway, Sweden, Switzerland and from Denmark. Welcome to you, all that are in Denmark. I hope you are all well and are safe and um, hopefully starting to see the light at the end of, of this COVID-19 tunnel. In Australia, we've done very well and I've talked about that before. And um, basically everything is back to normal. So we can, we can go to, uh, you know, gatherings and concerts and um, we have started singing again in my choir, so that is amazing. So I um, empathize with you and when you are still in lockdown, so um, just to let you know that. You can find me as Mindful Making on Instagram and Facebook and Mindful Making AU on Ravelry and um, I also have an Etsy shop of that name. Today I will talk about, or you will get to see two finished objects and uh, what is on my needles, which is not much. Last in the last episode, I talked about, well, there was a lot of there were a lot of secrets, and there still is. Uh, so apologies for that. And then towards the end, I thought I uh, share a bit of um, life updates, what's happened in our family and in life in general. So I hope you have your project ready, a cup of coffee, tea, wine, whatever you fancy, and uh, that you will enjoy um, spending this time with me. So welcome to you all. The first finished object is the Albion sweater. It's designed by Brooklyn Tweed. I uh, initially made this and it was finished in September 2017 and it was gifted for my son uh, for his 18th birthday that year. That was all he wanted. He wanted his mom to make him a, uh, a jumper. So of course I did that. But it was too long for him, and he hadn't—he hasn't used it very much. So he said, "Mom, could you could you take um, could you reduce the length, please?" And now I I don't want the texture throughout, and I'll put in a picture of what the Albion sweater looks like. And he said, "Oh, I would just want it plain down and a bit shorter." So I unpicked the sweater. It wasn't easy because it was a bottom-up construction. And um, yeah, so it's just the wrong, wrong way around. So I had to cut it to, uh, to rip it back, but succeeded. And it's been sitting, waiting for me to knit it for a while. Uh, but I got to do that in, uh, in April. Um, so during the last couple of weeks in April and it is now finished. So I will insert a little video where I talk about um, that process and you can see what it looked like when it was finished. This is the Albion sweater I made for my oldest son Anders. 
Initially, it was too long, so he wanted it shortened. And um, as it is originally worked bottom up, uh, I started picking up the um, the hem, which was quite difficult. But finally, I I I made it, and I could uh, pull back and rip back up to around here. Uh, so I completed the last structured pattern and I think I might have just added a few extra rows in here but that is just a design feature and then I, I knitted it down straight and I think eight centimeters uh, two inches shorter I also did a slight modification on the uh, at the shoulders because actually the sh uh, shoulder cap is uh, was too high so it should have bolted up here at the top of the shoulder so what I did is that I picked up the seam the shoulder seam and then I tucked in the sleeve just a centimeter in like here so it sits underneath here and then um, re-sewed it together so that's sort of got rid of this little it looked like a half a puff puffy sleeve <laughs> uh, which wasn't too pretty um, I think he will enjoy this jumper now he is uh, leaving so uh, leaving leaving home so he we will put it in his suitcase and um, he can enjoy a mum knit when he's away from home I can't show you the actual sweater anymore because it has left the country. It was packed in my son's suitcase as he moved back to Denmark to study earlier this month. Um, so hopefully that he will that will keep him warm in when winter arrives or autumn and uh, that he could have a warm hug from his mom when he needs it. Another finished object was a pair of sock, socks and I knitted on them uh, in the last episode. It's a plain vanilla sock and it's worked in your rule superwash uh, merino sock yarn <laughs> in, a, in a dark charcoal. This is what I have left of the yarn. So it's a deep charcoal color. They are not here anymore either. So here they are. It's a just a two by two ribbing and 64 stitches on needle size 2.25 millimeter. That's a US one. I have practiced the US sizes and um, on in a size in a size 43 European shoes um, shoe size or foot size and on the on the picture you can see them on the sock blockers and I've also put in a short video talking about them and it comes here So his sock is fin his socks are finished too, but I do think that I cut them short of a centimeter or so <laughs> to rush to get them finished. So Anders could take them in his suitcase and have a pair of mum-made socks. Yeah, I think they are probably a centimeter too short. But anyway, it will warm his feet anyway. And uh, finally, there's actually an extra finished object, which was almost final at the last, or in the last episode. So that is one of the secret designs. It's a, um, it's a raglan jumper that is worked in two uh, strands of yarn held together. So a sock yarn and a mohair that is finished. And uh, 
that is gone too. <laughs> so all of them, I can't show you, but it's still a secret. Um, that jumper has gone to photo shoot and hopefully in a not too distant future, there will be a test call um, for testing that jumper. But that leads me then to the tally of a um, meter of yarns that I have knitted up in during the month of April. Today is the 2nd of May, so which is very suitable then to do a, a bit of um, reflections on, um, on the April knits. So in April, and this is again my knitting journal as you've seen a few times. I finished three objects as I've just mentioned and I have knitted up 3596 meters of yarn. So there you go. So in April I have a total of 7, 10, 12 finished objects and six of them our socks. <laughs> it's quite interesting when doing these sort of um, summaries. I feel that I knit a lot and then three finished objects in a month. That doesn't seem a lot. But again, there is one on the needle for sure uh, that I've worked on as well. And I guess with, uh, you know, family and full-time job and a bit of a, uh, well, trying to do some designs on the side. Uh, the time is limited. So I will just enjoy the process and not um, be hung up on number of finished objects. So, um, so that's the status of uh, the April finished objects. the needles and works in progress. So there is another pair of socks. Again, a very simple go-to super e easy two by two ribbing socks. And this is, um, I don't know, can you call it top down, but cuff down, cuff to toe sock, two at a time. 2.25 millimeters again 64 stitches these are for a friend of my daughter's so uh, his birthday is coming up he lives in canberra so it's one of his of her high school mates uh, studying in canberra and she said mom could you knit miles a pair of socks and of course I am happy to do that. So these are my commute socks whenever I commute or just uh, bring around socks. So I actually worked on these, a fair bit of this at a um, uh, at the Sydney Writers Festival. So we went to, um, to a talk of, uh, or by, with, a presentation with the author he's called Trent Dalton so an Australian author who has written two amazing books so uh, jumping from what's on the needles and socks to a book recommendation so Trent Dalton has uh, as I said a, an Australian author and he has written a, his uh, first book was called uh, no, I can't remember. Boy, oh, it's, it, it's called Boy Swallows Universe. An amazing book. And we read it in our uh, book club. Um, highly recommended. The second book, uh, in my view, is even better. And I think in my book club, we agreed on that. Uh, it's called All Shimmering Skies. An amazing book. So if you're looking for a new author and inspiration for reading or as an audiobook, 
um, and maybe looking into an Australian author. That's uh, one that I can highly recommend and two books that I can highly recommend. Coming back to this work in progress. <laughs> um, the yarn that I'm using, beautiful dark blue color. And this is a sock yarn from Holst Garn. I haven't tried this before, but I have been, I am looking for um, sort of regular sock yarn that is suitable for knitting men's sock. And they may not like, you know, hand dyed purpley pink uh, colors. So I've just gone for very basic uh, colors. So this is called Highland. It's an 80% superwash Highland wool. 20% nylon and it's from Holzgarn. It is, it runs 210 meters per 50 gram. <clears throat> this color is called marine. So this is a, a, a 50, 50 gram skein. It, it knits up beautifully. It's very, a very bouncy yarn that has a lot of memory. So I think it will sit quite snug on, on the foot and on the leg. It's a joy to knit with, so I can highly recommend that. Um, let's see if it pills. It may, it, I don't think it will pill pill. I think it will be fine. There you go, two at a time, my favorite way. And um, while I was online and uh, getting yarn shipped from Denmark, I bought a bit more. Not, uh, and I will just show you the sock yarn for now. Um, so I got these three colors, whoops, so the blue and a brownie brown gray and a an almost black gray, very dark black gray, gray black, yeah. So I ordered four of these, two and two. So very simple, plain, um, especially for men's socks. So I ordered those. So those are a few um, additions to my uh, large stash. Big deep sigh. Uh, another work in progress is the secret project. I showed you just a few snippets of the color of the yarn last time. And uh, it is this beautiful color. It's a DK weight, merino yarn. And let's see if I can just show you a tiny, tiny teaser. A tiny, tiny teaser of the texture. I am almost done with the body. Uh, and moving on to the sleeves later in the week. Um, a joy to knit weight. It's not often that I work with DK weight yarn and I think I just have to get used to that it's more dense and it's um, it's heavier. Where So this is a worsted spun as well and, and have uh, you know, the yarn is a worsted spun so <clears throat> and also with a fairly high twist so it's quite dense. Uh, the yarn and not as airy as a woolen spun, which is typically what I work with. So that's just a, a, a different feel to it, but I think it will be good. Cliffhanger again. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you will hear more about it uh, when it um, when it gets published. 
last time I also um, presented you a yarn that was kindly gifted to me by Louis and, Louis and Lola. So a commercial. Um, I have been gifted this yarn. So this is a, a merino possum blend. It's a very beautiful um, pale pink, it's not pink, rosy type color. Uh, I talked about it last time. Let's just see. Yes, it's a 50 merino and 20% possum fur. In the comments of in the last episode, one, um, one of you viewers asked about the the, the possum and how it was harvested and um, Karina from Louis and Lola kindly answered that question so if you're curious about that go to episode 27 and look through the comments and you can see that. I think she would also have it on her website a description of the possum and I've just done a bit of uh, swatching a bit of swatching with with this yarn so um, untangling everything so I am actually thinking of doing something with can you see that it's a bit of the Sun so I've just started with a uh, two by two ribbing there you uh, can you see that at all and then some and then I'm thinking of inverting so inside out of the stockinette and with some sort of stripes or texture with slip stitches or knit stitches into something. It's super duper soft. Super duper soft. Let's just see if we can get this. So I hope you can get a sense of these sort of stripes, vertical stripes. It's a bit tricky with the light like this. Oh, there you can see, could it be uh, horizontal as well? Well, but this is um, just tipped. So I, uh, I enjoy working with this. It's very slippery, um, on, especially on these uh, metal needles. So maybe I will transition to um, wooden needles to just get a bit more grip on the yarn. More to come on that one as well, but just showing that I've just been playing around a bit with this. What I am wearing, I totally forgot. So this is a, a simple um, summer tea that I've talked about before. It's a merino silk blend. Super light, it's a lace weight yarn. This is just a round yoke and um, short sleeved, very simple and um, rolled hem in the neckline. And uh, this is one of my designs. Well, yeah, it's a very simple one. Um, one of you asked whether it would be, the pattern would be available for the Northern Hemisphere summer season. It won't, sadly not. Um, I simply do not have enough time uh, and it does take me a while to, to write things up and, and create the pattern. So I don't think it will, well, it won't be um, ready for the summer season uh, in the Northern, Hem Northern Hemisphere this year, maybe next year, <laughs> who knows? Um, but anyway, I'm wearing this today. It's a very suitable for the weather here today. So very nice, I enjoy wearing this. It's just like wearing a cloud, almost wearing nothing. Yeah, another work in progress, which I, which has been a, whip for a very 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 long time a few years i think it's probably the last three years so i have in it i have it sitting here next to my chair 
It's in a, it normally sits next to the couch upstairs. It's a bit dusty to be honest. So it's this um, basket and it's a crochet blanket. It is a simple granny stripe um, blanket using a so this is a highland wool it's 100% lamb's wool in a it's it's a color um Louis Rullestein. it's from Garnosel in Denmark um, and then I'm combining it and holding it together with I, this is probably a machine yarn or for a yarn for machine knitting and I bought this cone I don't know 10 years ago or something um, it might be a cotton I don't know and it doesn't say anything in in uh, in the cone or inside that cone so this these just sits next to me at the, uh, on the couch this is not something I carry around and um, I haven't been working on it for a long time. I am using a um, 4.5 millimeter hook, crochet hook, and this is the style of the blanket. So this is then folded in half, so you can see it is pretty, pretty large, and it's just stripes and then a dark um, stripe in between these sections. There are I think 31 uh, grainy stripes in each of these sections and then this uh, black stripe and this is this is inspired by um, Pearl Soho. So they they have uh, they have the um, you know descriptions and, and and pattern for this it's uh, it's super super simple. I don't know whether I might have um, whether I have talked about this before because now I see I have this marker here <laughs> and then I can't remember what the marker is here to say whether it was a previous podcast whether it was on a um, you know sort of a month how far I got on a month or whether it was a 20 minutes a day challenge. I can't remember. What, what I will do now is that I will move this marker up here to where I am currently, and then I will follow up with you in the next episode. So um, if I talk like this in a few episodes time, just uh, remind me that uh, the marker is there to show where I was at episode number 28. So moving it up here where I am. Oops. There you go. And I was thinking one of my dear friends, Alexandra from the Fiberbound podcast, a beautiful knitter and podcast here in Australia. She has this cal or make along uh, going at the moment using the hashtag whip down cal 2021 and I thought I will I won't I won't get this done in the very near future I just get in a a row maybe once a week or once a month maybe but well uh, let me uh, join that make along and um and also share it here with you that will give me some accountability you are my accountability partners to get a bit done on the blanket if i don't show it the next few times just uh, send me a message saying how are you going with that blanket jane that would help me get a few a few rows in once in a while if you want to join in in the make along as well i am sure alexandra would welcome your entries it's called whip down cal 2021 and also check out her, her video podcast she makes some beautiful projects as well thank you all from for the comments on my uh, last episode 
I talked about um, Garden Gate. A lot of you have asked uh, if I have helped the um, Super Soft Holtzgarn um, single stranded or double stranded. So this is work single stranded on a 3.75 millimeter. Um, so it's um, just single stranded. And then we talked, I talked about this, uh, I'll put it over here, uh, the hem that has a tendency to, to want to flip up. The flipping hem. And uh, a lot of you responded to that and, uh, and pointed to explanations for why that happens. And uh, I have in the description box below, you can see uh, links to two explanations and two, um, well, it's probably the common way of, uh, or they are common, the, the um, how to fix it. So it's, it's natural for that um, when, transi when, transi when transitioning from rip to, um, to stocking it, that the hem naturally wants to flip up. Also because stocking it has, a, you know, it naturally wants to curl up. So there are a few things you can do here to avoid it to flipping up. One thing is to lengthen lengthen the ribbon and that was also suggested by let's just see here so monica in in the comments on the last episode commented yeah make make the ribbing longer because that would then you know um balance out or outweigh the um the tendency to roll or to curl up for for the stock in it and then also um, in either cast on or bind off firmly uh, on, in this um, after the ribbing. Then there is, because the problem is that when shifting from knit to purl stitches, that, that just gives a slightly extra uh, yarn length um, compared to the stocking it. So the, um, the gauge is slightly different and the tension might be slightly different. So that will that give that tendency to fold, uh, fold up. And then there's also this about um, orientating, so to put the uh, pearl stitches on top of each other, that is different from, from just the stocking it. But I think it's mostly because of that shifting from knit to pearl uh, that gives that sort of problem or oh, it's a natural thing another option uh, which I will try the next time I do a, um, a hem is to slip when you when if, if it's a if it's a bottom up when you move from the from the um, from the rib into the into the stocking it that you slip the knit stitches on the first row in the stocking it so you slip the knit stitches and 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 firmly just tuck the um, you know this you you, ha you hold the yarn behind keep the, the yarn behind your work uh, so you just pull them slightly together <clears throat> so slip the knit stitches and pull the pearl uh, slip the knit over the knit stitches and then knit if you're knitting in the round so that's a follow up on the flipping the flipping hem and thank you to all of you who responded to that question it's so good to you know to that like we can learn from each other and give inspiration to solutions there is a wealth of knowledge out there and just to be pointed in the right direction and i didn't know anything about that um, that um, how to fix that flipping hem so thank you all for commenting on that Further to uh, following up on what I talked about in the last episode um, and what has happened since um, or in the month or the weeks past. So I held this um, or I hosted this knit night at the Danish church in Pennant Hills, which is also here north of, of Sydney. It was a lovely evening. I really, I really enjoyed it. So I did. I had prepared a short presentation about inspiration 
which was very much about, you know, um, that I'm very much inspired by and, and I'm deeply rooted in the Danish tra tradition of simple, I'm about to say simple elegance uh, design and uh, a muted color palette. So we, there was a beautiful group of 12 ladies, you know, um, young to old, a mixture of Danes and Australians, just with the common interest of knitting. So uh, um, we talked and we chatted and we presented our projects and I think everybody had a great time. So I'm looking forward to the next Knit Night, which will be on the 19th of May again at the Danish church in Pennant Hills. Uh, the topic of that night will be swatching, uh, and gauge, and yarn choices, and you know, going up and down in needle sizes to get gauge. For some it's very, uh, you know, um, that's old news. Uh, and some it might be, there might be a few new tips and knowledge in that. So we will go through that. If you are around, please let me know if you want to join. Uh, I would put up a, a, a post on Instagram and there will be an event on my Facebook page if you are interested. So I would love to see you there. It's, it was, you know, what I really liked about that evening is that it was people um, that had heard about that knit night from different places through the Danish church and the newsletters and then um, some friends uh, that that have you know some friends of mine were there and then there were these two two lovely uh, young ladies hi Ira and Ana who came that had seen uh, I, I posted on a, a Australian knitters Facebook page as well and they've seen it and they uh, they came along so that was it was just it was just it was just beautiful it was just beautiful so i'm looking very much forward to doing it the next time as well i think that concludes the knitting related content i thought i didn't have anything to share with you today because i i don't have much to show you but i've talked for half an hour so um thank you all for for um tuning in so far and uh, please stay on if you want to hear a bit on on sort of on the private um life of of mine if if not then i hope to see you again next time please do a thumbs up subscribe and hit the notifications so you never miss an episode and uh, leave a comment it's so lovely to engage with you i thoroughly enjoy that and i'm so honored that you want to spend the time with me So on, on, on sort of in the private life, the, um, the most significant thing, which it is significant. So our oldest son, Anders, he's 21, he left the nest. So he left home, he boarded a plane to go to Denmark to study. So he left on the 27th of April. And it's our first first child that leaves home, and uh, it was a pretty emotional day. Let me put it that way. So we uh, we had we had taken the day off to be with him, and we went out for a nice lunch in all our family, and then drove to the airport in well well in time of his um, uh, departure time. And uh, I will just show insert a bit footage from the airport that was a very weird experience
So the airport was deserted. There were four uh, departing international flights, four at Sydney Airport, which is a, it's a, that's a large airport. There was no, no people there. Uh, Anders had to go through three stations, or at least two before checking in. So for one, you know, it was um, to check that he had the permission to leave Australia. So he had to apply and if he had to have received the permission to leave, there was actually one man in, in that queue who hadn't received the permission. He had applied, but he hadn't received the permission. So um, the uh, border control came and talked to him and he, he wasn't allowed on the flight. So everything had to be sorted and in, in, in perfect order. So uh, Anders had to, I think in his application, had to say that he would be away for more than three months and uh, the reasons why he traveled. There was no problems in getting the permission. So he's, he's, um, he's a Danish citizen as well. So it's very natural that he would um, go to Denmark to, to study. So we got through there uh, and then it was then for the, um, for, to ensure that he had a negative COVID test that um, it couldn't be more than 24 hours old. So he had to go early in the day, went to the hospital to get the, um, a, a COVID test paid $150, which is about um, 500 Danes kroners to, um, and probably 120 US dollars to, to get a, a COVID test, um, sort of a rapid response and also printed out in, in, in the format that he had to present. So he was, uh, he was checked on that and then he got to, uh, to the uh, check-in counter. We had to repack a bit of his uh, suitcase <laughs> oh, um, to avoid uh, extra weight, but the, uh, the, the check-in lady was very nice. So, so he could, he, we got through without a very heavy penalty. <laughs> So I think it took one and a half hours, at least one hour, one and a half probably to go through all that. And um, then it was time to wave goodbye. That is hard. That is, that was hard. So it was just like an era ending, you know. And I wrote a, an Instagram post about it a few days after he's left because I couldn't do it before then and uh, talking about that we as parents we want to raise independent responsible young adults and suddenly the day that you know they are that kind um, responsible empathetic independent young people and of course they want to leave home that's how it's supposed to be there's just a oh, leaving behind a big big hole and um, yeah so it was pretty emotional he has landed safely in Denmark he's called me and um, or called us not just me but I think as a mom Always, one time mom, always a mom. <laughs> so uh, so we are, we are catching up with him a few few times. He stays with my family. So the network is there, all is good. He, um, he was so ready. So, so that happened um, and that's the main thing. That's the main thing that has happened since then. It's been quite busy at work and I've been pretty exhausted from that. But otherwise, yeah. That's a huge shift. We still have two left here at home, so we're not empty nesters yet. But I think they miss their brother as well. But, and, um, and we um, try to catch up with him often. And luckily we have all the, uh, you know, online interaction, so it's not difficult. So, uh, so that's what happened privately. Today is my husband's birthday. We had a nice, 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 nice breakfast this morning and we will go out to um, to a french restaurant tonight and have a nice dinner so um, it's super super lovely so i think that's it 
and I hope you've enjoyed this um, this time with me. It's been a pleasure sitting down to chat with you. So thank you so much for spending your valuable time here. I'm looking forward to seeing you again, and I hope you have um, have had uh, you know some some wonderful knitting done, some crocheting maybe. And I will be looking forward to seeing you again soon. Bye everyone.